Welcome to Survival Theory. Emergency fishing kit. Today, we're going to see what's inside mine and see if we can actually catch something with it. Let's get started. Okay, so I've just got an old fossil tin. I guess a watch came in that many years ago. I've got some spider wire. Stuff's probably, uh, I think this is 80 pound test. Of course, now it's all caught up in there. Here we go. Some spider wire. And that will probably um, be difficult to unwind because of the way I've wound it up, but oh well. Got a small floating lure. Two corks small ones or bobbers whatever an assortment of hooks worm hooks the little golden hooks um, small beetle spin hooks we've got a few weights in here a few plastic bodies here uh, quite the assortment of little plastic bodies in here because those can go quick sometimes. So I've got quite a bit. Uh, steel lead. This is about a 15 pound test wound up on a piece of wood with the hook already on it. I'm not even sure how many uh, feet that is. A few weights, a few tiny hooks. So to use this, I'm going to use a body with a hook and I'll need a stick. Plenty of yopon available for a fishing pole. I think I found one. Now I'll just trim it up. Everywhere I'm going to be holding this, pretty smooth. I like it. A little heavy, a little stiff, but it'll do the job. Let's go string it up. Well, look what I found dead, unfortunately. It's a rough green snake. It's called a rough green snake because it has keels on each of the scales. Uh, it makes it rough to the touch. Uh, it looks like it was in the middle of eating a large grasshopper. And it got squished. Most unfortunate. You don't see these very often. They're very uh, sneaky, evasive, and of course difficult to see when they're in the trees. Very unfortunate. I'm going to use this spider wire just because I think it'll be uh, difficult to untangle the way I've got it since I don't have it wrapped around anything. But if I'm careful, I think next time I'll wrap it better. Put a knot around this. Now normally you want to tie to this tip or actually you want to run uh, the string down near your fingers or your hands and then run it up to the tip and from there out. 
because if the tip breaks, they're still secured near your hands. But this stick is so thick, I don't think it's going to be an issue. I ended up pulling about 12 feet off of it. I think that's plenty. And it did not get tangled up, surprisingly. Okay, so I'll need a hook. This is actually more difficult to tie than a regular fishing line because it's so flexible. Okay, I'll find a small body to put on there. There we go. Yellow and black. Well, that's going to come off easy, I think. Of course, grasshoppers would work well. They're everywhere in the grass. I could search for worms, for grubs. Anything edible. Okay, let's go try this out. Okay, let's see if we can catch something. I was able to catch one. Over in the thicker brush where they can't see me as well. It's not much, but that would be a good meal. Be like a quarter pounder after everything is said and done. It's a lot more difficult just to stick. Uh, it takes a little getting used to it if you're not used to it. I also learned that this stick is quite heavy. Uh, I mean, over time it gets heavy. Uh, I don't mind right now because it's a workout. But if I was in a survival situation, I would want the stick much lighter. So I'm not wasting so much energy on holding the stick. And because this is not a survival situation, I'm going to let this small guy go. See if we can catch something bigger. something. That felt like a meal. Well, that one bent the hook. Straighten it out with my multi-tool. and took my body. Typical. The one that got away. Well, I'm catching something to eat about every half hour of fishing. I think that's pretty good for a survival situation because they were bass, uh, pretty good eating. 
I did not use a bobber with the grasshopper. I probably could have uh, maybe got some perch that way or some bluegill, something like that. But uh, catching the bass was great using a just a little beetle here, beetle jig. These ponds are all over East Central Texas. Uh, they were stocked with bass, perch, catfish. Some of them maybe 50, 60 years ago. Some might be newer, it's hard to tell. Uh, they're a great source for fish. At night, there's frogs all over the shore, snakes. Great source of food. But you gotta get used to this for sure. It's different than a rod and reel. Now, just to show the difference between survival fishing and rod and reel fishing, this is the second one I've caught in less than five minutes because I'm able to cast away from me where the fish can't see me and they strike. With the homemade pole and 10, 12 feet of string, I usually can't cast far away enough to where they can't see me, so fishing is a little more difficult. You have to really get it in the hidden spaces or some very dirty water. I can probably have more luck with a bobber in deeper, darker water. Uh, I'm going to keep this up. It's fun. Thanks for watching Survival Theory. Had a lot of fun testing out the emergency fishing kit. Leave some comments below. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you got some ideas, experiences to share. And as always, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. survival kit when you have a rod and reel. All too easy. Woo! Who needs a survival kit when you've got an ugly stick?